As commander in chief, I think we need to be focused on the real threats of the 21st century. And what are those threats? Climate change, artificial intelligence, loose nuclear material, military drones, and non-state actors. And if you look up, we're in the process of potentially losing the AI arms race to China right now, because they have more access to more data than we do, and their government is putting billions of dollars to work, subsidizing the development of AI in a way that we are not. I've got nothing against Andrew Yang, but we need to unpack this idea of a US-China AI arms race, because he's not the first person to bring it up, and he probably won't be the last. The definition of an arms race is a competition between nations for superiority in the development and accumulation of weapons, or persons of war. Now one could certainly argue that the relationship between the US and China has been a bit tense for a while, since about the Korean War, but the concept of an AI arms race between the US and China is actually fairly recent. It started in about 2016 with the release of a model called AlphaGo. Like many significant developments in the AI world, AlphaGo represented another milestone that developers had reached in terms of creating smarter algorithms. In this case, it was developing an algorithm that could beat some of the best human players in a game called Go, a complex strategy board game that was invented in China over 2,500 years ago. Now, while this accomplishment didn't resonate that much with the average American, it did catch the eye of the Chinese government. Soon after, in 2017, the Chinese government announced that it had developed a new strategic plan for AI investment and development, with the goal of being the world leader in AI by 2030. And they've made some impressive strides. According to the 2019 Global AI Index, a report that ranks nations on how much they are driving AI development, China is in second place, with the US being in first, due to their strong investment in research and development, their very focused government strategy and startup support, and their AI infrastructure and operating environment. Now this makes sense as the Chinese government developed a strategic plan for AI in 2017 called the Next Generation Artificial Intelligence Development Plan. I'll note here that the US isn't actually mentioned in this plan at all. The report refers to national security and national competitiveness concerns, but does not point out any specific countries that they're looking to beat, although one could reasonably infer that the US might be one of them. In that time, they've invested in infrastructure and talent, and have pushed a ton of money into academic and industry AI research and development. In fact, they went from publishing 10% of the AI papers in 2000 to publishing 28% of them in 2018. In addition to these investments, one of the things that helped China advance their AI development so quickly is the fact that they are essentially a surveillance state. The Chinese government collects way more data on their citizens than the US does, which gives them a pretty sizable starting data set for certain forms of AI development. As you might expect, the US government has some thoughts on this growth. While China is only mentioned in passing in the 2018 summary of the Department of Defense's AI strategy, the 2019 interim report from the National Security Commission on AI references China frequently as a serious competitor in AI development, as well as as a potential national security threat. However, when asked directly whether the US is in an AI arms race with China, DOD reps deny it, saying that we are in a strategic competition, not an arms race. Now, could they be lying? Sure. Telling the public that we're actively trending towards war is generally a bad look, and might prematurely amplify tensions overseas. On the other hand, this is the US government responding to the narrative of the AI arms race. They're not really the people who created it. So let's take a look at the people who did. Most of the people who claim to be sounding the alarm on the AI arms race stand to benefit financially from the existence of an AI arms race. Founders of defense contractors such as Palmer Lucky and Peter Thiel have claimed that the US needs an AI development program similar to the one that we used in the nuclear arms race during the Cold War. And Facebook and Google have emphasized the threat of China in their bids for military contracts. In other words, the call is coming from inside the house. Additionally, if you look at the US's concerns around global AI development, China isn't the only country mentioned, it's just the one that tends to be picked up the most in the press. The DoD also mentions Russia as a concern, and while we talk a lot about potential hacking threats from Russia, we don't ever hear about an AI arms race with them. In short, it's unlikely that the US is in an AI arms race with China. We're increasing our AI development for national security reasons, but we're also increasing it for economic reasons. Strategic global competition doesn't just pertain to military threats, it also pertains to remaining economically competitive by developing new technologies. And China isn't the only country that we're thinking about when we're doing it. We're also thinking about Russia as well as Europe. Additionally, a considerable portion of the money that both the US and China put into AI research and development produces publications. 
journal articles that people around the world can see to learn more about the new developments in the field. So continued investment in this work actually supports everyone, as we can learn from each other's successes and failures. Now, just because we're not in an arms race right now doesn't mean that we couldn't find ourselves in one in the future. And this would be bad for two main reasons. First, it would mean that we're actively trending towards war with China. Now, this might look more like a cyber war than a traditional land war, and we're definitely already engaged in some cyber shenanigans in addition to an actual trade war over there right now. But an outright military conflict with China is probably something that we want to avoid. Second, and in my opinion, more importantly, an AI arms race between the US and China is a race to the bottom. Developing new technologies while under military threat from other countries has led to some incredible innovations in science and technology. However, they've often been accomplished through reckless, unethical, and sometimes downright awful means. And we've seen what happens when people try to develop AI with good intentions and relatively careful planning. There are still often unintended consequences and use cases that people just don't predict for. Add in the pressure from a military conflict and the likelihood of recklessly developing AI systems that have considered considerable unintended consequences only goes up. AI development doesn't need to move faster, it needs to move more carefully, and an arms race would not be conducive to that. Now, this doesn't mean that China should be absolved of using AI to perpetuate a massive surveillance state as well as to persecute religious minorities, nor does it mean that the US shouldn't invest in AI development and protect new technologies that might be misused by other countries. But much of that can be accomplished through diplomacy and smarter regulations instead of an arms race. The last idea I'll leave you with, and I'd love to hear your thoughts about it in the comments section, is this. How will we know when someone has won the AI arms race? Is it the first nation to develop artificial general intelligence? The first nation to start using autonomous drones? Well, we're already doing that. Is it the first nation to successfully deploy an invasive AI-based surveillance campaign against a foreign country? Spoiler, as far as I can tell, there's no right answer to this question. If you like this video, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my current patrons. Otherwise, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.